How to solve circuits the right way and the joys of circuits analysis. In lecture four, we continue to work out examples of the extra element theorem. These examples can be found in my book, Fast Analytical Techniques in Electrical and Electronic Circuits, published by Cambridge University Press and available online from any bookseller. In this example, I'm going to work out the voltage gain of a common emitter amplifier with emitter resistor or emitter feedback. And here is the common emitter amplifier with an emitter resistor or emitter feedback resistor for which we want to determine the gain voltage output divided by the input voltage here. We will use the equivalent circuit model of the transistor as shown in which we take into account the collector to base resistance. We are going to apply the extra element theorem in which we're going to designate the beta IB dependent current source as the extra element. And we're going to take it out of the circuit or rather out of the calculus of the circuit by letting the value of beta go to infinity. When we do that, we obtain the following circuit. Beta goes to infinity. Beta IB depends on IB, and therefore IB will shrink to zero. When that happens, the voltage drop across RS and R pi will be zero, and V in will appear directly across RE, starting a current through it, IE equals to V in divided by RE. This current will entirely flow through this branch, branch here because there is no current flowing here. And the current here is exactly the same as the current here or minus output current, which when we multiply by the output resistance RC, we get the output voltage. So this is a straightforward calculation, very similar to ideal op-amp calculations. Beta goes to infinity, IB goes to zero. It follows that the input voltage appears directly across the emitter resistor, and it starts a current through with IE, which is the same as the output voltage. And when you substitute for the value of the emitter current V in over RE in V expression of the output voltage equal to I out RC, we get the gain with beta going to infinity. So this is our first calculation of the extra element theorem in which the extra element has been taken out by letting its value go to infinity. The second calculation that we need to perform is the inverse gain with respect to beta with the excitation of the transfer function set equal to zero. And when we do that, this is the circuit that we obtain. The excitation of our of our transfer function was V in, which was located here when we set that equal to zero, it's a short circuit. And to determine the inverse gain with respect to beta, we replace the dependent current source with an independent current source pointing in the opposite direction and figure out how much IT talks back to IB. In other words, we want to determine the ratio IB to IT. And as you can see from this circuit, this is a relatively simple calculation. It comprises essentially a current source feeding into two resistive branches. The first resistive branch is RCE, and the second resistive branch is RC in series with the parallel combination of RE with RS plus R pi. You see that because these are connected here, and this point is connected to that point there. So in order to find out what IB is, you basically go through two successive current divisions. Either you can do that or you can get a little bit fancier and do a Norton equivalent of this branch here. That's another easy calculation to do, whereby you determine the short circuit current at this point here and the internal resistance looking back. I will show you how to do it with the Norton current source or how it's done with the Norton current source equivalent. As I said, you have two choices up to you. But if I do the Norton current equivalent circuit method, then looking back here, the internal resistance is determined by letting this current source be an open circuit, which gives me RE in parallel with RCE plus RC. That's your Norton resistance looking back. And the short circuit current that you get here in this branch is going to be nothing more than the current division between RCE and RC. So 
that's going to be uh, RT times RCE divided by RCE plus RC. So I can write now only one current division instead of two current divisions. And either way, it's very simple to find out what IB is now. It's just the current division between this Norton current equivalent and these two resistors. That's a straightforward current division. That's the Norton current. And this is the current division here between this branch and that branch. And in that way, we get this expression for the inverse gain with respect to beta with the excitation set equal to zero. This is a nice expression, but we can make it just a little bit nicer by dividing up and down here by RCE and dividing up and down here with RE parallel RCE plus RC. And when we do that, we get this expression here. And what is nice about this expression is that in the denominator, we have one plus a ratio, which we can assess rather quickly. For a typical transistor, this ratio is going to be much less than one. And around here, we're going to see that it's 1 plus Rs plus R pi divided by Re parallel Rce plus Rc. And here we can see that this easily approximates as Re, and we have something like Rs plus R pi divided by Re. And that number may be comparable to 1, slightly less than 1, uh, but not much less than 1. Regardless, it's a relatively clean, nice expression, which tells us a lot. Meaningful expression, that is to say. The third and last calculation that we need to perform for the extra element theorem is the determination of the null inverse gain with respect to beta with the response nulled. The response of our, of our transfer function was the output voltage. so. We are going to null this output voltage here. And how are we going to do that? Again, we replace the independent current source, rather the dependent current source with an independent current source pointing in the opposite direction. Keep the input voltage or the excitation of the transfer function. And the two together are going to null the output voltage, which is the response of our transfer function. And when we do that, when the output voltage is nulled, the current through it is nulled. And from this equivalent circuit, we see that if the current here is zero, then the current in this branch is here is zero. So IT flows circles around RCE and back into itself. And when it does that, it creates a voltage drop across RCE, which is IT times RCE. Now, because the output voltage is zero, that voltage that appears across RCE appears directly across RE. You can see that. This voltage here goes down to ground potential, and whatever is the voltage across RCE appears across RE. And now you can calculate the current through RE because you know the voltage across it, it's ITRCE, and that current is going to be minus ITERC divided by RE. That's going to be this current here. But because this current here is zero, that current is going to flow entirely in the base circuit. And therefore, you know what IB is. IB is now the same as the emitter current when you know the response here. So it's a very straightforward case of doing the algebra on the circuit diagram. And you get IB is minus ITERC divided by RE, and that just gives you the null inverse gain. And all we have to do now is substitute these three separate independent calculations in the expression of the extra element theorem, as I'll show you next. And here we go. Let us substitute these three things in the expression of the extra element theorem. It tells you that the gain is given by the gain with beta infinity, which we calculated, followed by a correction factor, one plus one over alpha. Alpha is the gain of your dependent current source, which in our case is beta. This alpha was general. It's not the alpha of the transistor. This was a general expression. And multiplied by its 
null inverse gain. Same thing in the denominator multiplied by its inverse gain. The first calculation up in the numerator was with the response null, and the denominator calculation was with the excitation set equal to zero. So for alpha in our case, it's the beta of the transistor, and we calculated these two things. And when we substitute, we obtain this very nice, neat expression here. It's nice, of course, because the dominant term appearing up front is pretty much what the gain of that amplifier is. It's minus RC over RE. That's what you had in mind to do when you put the emitter resistor, the feedback resistor there. But it's not exactly this because beta is not infinity. It's followed by a correction factor. The correction factor you see in the denominator, you have one in the numerator, you have one minus one over beta RE over RCE. And you can easily appreciate the fact that this expression here is much smaller than one. So this is very amenable to quick approximations. Same is true for the denominator. You can make assessments of each one of these terms here and decide whether you want to keep it or drop it, or whatever you want to do with it. But you can see how the various elements of the circuits, to what extent, come into the play when determining the voltage gain of this device here, of this amplifier here. Now, some of you might be thinking, yeah, very nice expression, good calculations, but I think I could have done this with uh, just doing nodal analysis. I didn't have to learn much about the extra element theorem. Okay, let me show you something else now. Suppose I want to take into account some capacitance connected between collector and base, which I call C mu, and you want to determine now the voltage transfer function, the frequency response of this amplifier. What do you think? You want to go back and write some nodal equations now, or see how you can handle this using the extra element theorem and come up with the answer just as easily as you came up with the answer for the voltage gain without the capacitor. We're going to see that in our next video. Thank you. See you then.